Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having an outstanding week so far. Uh, in this class, everybody, uh, we will be looking at IELTS speaking part one, talking about your family. Definitely a topic that could easily come up on your next IELTS exam. Welcome, Sarah, our chat moderator. Good to have you with us. Uh, students, you can ask Sarah questions if you've got them. You can also ask me questions, of course, at any time. Uh, nice to have you in the class, Fuang. Hi, Andrew. Welcome, members. Welcome to our new chat moderator, Chen. You will see him in the class as well. Thank you for helping us out. And welcome, Nipa. Akriti, Harjot, and all of our viewers. Uh, students, in this class, um, we will be um, looking at questions about family, so siblings, parents, the importance of family, and so forth. Part one of the IELTS uh, asks usually questions on some general topic. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are our websites that power these live classes. This is our academic website here at aehelp.com. We will use the website today to talk with students. You can click this big red button that's just above my head there to join our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. We are an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner, an IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent. So you are in excellent hands uh, to learn for the IELTS exam. My degree, I don't often mention this, but my degree is in psychology and I specialize on uh, development and communication. Uh, for general IELTS, it's the green background, gieltshelp.com. It's this big red button here. You can join our live uh, chat through either the general or the academic IELTS. Again, just click that big red button and get yourself the uh, general IELTS premium package. It's a one-time payment and uh, you can use the code over seven to get an additional a 10% discount. It's definitely worth it. Um, we've got uh, PayPal options, Google Pay options, so uh, you should have no problems. If you have questions, let me know. We'll come back to this website a little bit later and uh, practice speaking with some of our students uh, using our voice. All right, um, apps, yes, we have them. Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help. The apps will link to the websites. Instagram IELTS underscore A Help, G IELTS Help for schedules and vocabulary. All right. If you have questions that do not get answered in the class or by our amazing moderators, then you can always just send an email to adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. And students, definitely use English in the chat, okay, Akriti? English. IELTS is definitely all English and uh, you need to be at least an intermediate level to consider sitting the IELTS exam. If you want to get our uh, exam books in hard copy, you can do that from Amazon. You can search for A Helps Academic IELTS or G Helps General IELTS and Amazon will deliver those books to your door. All right, uh, March 2nd to March 4th, everybody. We've got lots of classes speaking right now. Then we've got uh, task two writing, listening, uh, speaking and more speaking. Lots of speaking. So stay tuned, subscribe, become a member um, and uh, get notifications. Uh, this is our uh, most recent video release. We're going to be releasing another one fairly soon here, a reading video. I'll put that into the chat there for you. There you go. Okay, everybody. So uh, IELTS speaking part one. It's short, it's fast, it's four times faster than any of the other sections, but worth just as much. 
and has just as much content. Of course, with speech, we can deliver a lot of content quickly. So in this sense, the speaking section is the most challenging that you have to really just prove your best English in 12 to 15 minutes. And the examiner will welcome you into the interview room or you will do the interview through the computer. Either way, you will be met by an examiner. Make sure to go early, make sure to warm up, make sure to practice with other candidates before your speaking starts. This is very important. Go one hour before your speaking so that you can turn your brain into your English version of your mind ASAP on the day of the exam as soon as possible. Okay, um, and then the examiner meets and greets you and the examiner will, especially in the face-to-face -face interview, start by asking you for your identification. So let's just warm up by practicing some of these preliminary, it means the initial, okay? Uh, I'm going to teach you vocabulary integrated, so while we're doing the speaking, uh, here's a good one for you, preliminary. Preliminary means initial or first, to really simplify it. Okay, um, preliminary initial first. Uh, so the preliminary questions are most likely going to be these questions here. The first one they will ask you is, may I see your identification? Um, give me a nice full sentence for this one. Okay, let's focus in students. Start to gear your mind towards the questions. All right. So, Kambaj says, Yes, sure. Here is my passport. I used uh, it for registration a few days ago. Please have a look. All right. A couple of small mistakes here, um, Kambaj. Uh, the missing D for the past tense and the missing article A. Uh. Without those, the examiner is thinking band five. Okay. Technically, they're not marking you. Um, let me make the screen smaller here. I'm not sure if somebody's asked me to do that yet, but I just see that the screen is a bit big. So let me make that a little bit smaller. Yeah, there we go. Now you're looking at everything I'm looking at. Okay, maybe a tiny touch smaller there. Um, so, there we go. Uh, yeah, so you can't make mistakes. Um, you know, students say, oh, well, they're not marking me. I heard they're not marking me on these first few questions. Not directly, but indirectly, they are, okay? Um, they're marking you from the first step that you take um, into the exam room. Uh, there's a few silly videos out there that say things like, oh, body language is not important or, you know, you don't need to use um, uh, or you don't need to have eye contact and so on. Uh, yeah, they're not directly marking you for body language. They're not going to say, oh, yeah, moves hands while speaking. So they don't mark you for that. That's true. Uh, but body language is certainly a very important part of communication, both for the speaker and the listener. So uh, indirectly, yes, body language will have an effect on your score. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. In psychology, the first lesson they teach you about body language is that 60% of communication is nonverbal. So it's the way that we move and how we look and the voice, the uh, intonation the uh, emphasis in our voice so um, you have to use body language keep an open posture okay I don't often say this but in the aisles don't cross your arms like this don't put pressure on your chest this is a closed defensive kind of position um, it puts pressure on your chest uh, makes your breathing more challenging so keep an open uh, body posture with your hands uh, moving if you can okay don't just sit there like a stone Okay, that's awkward, like, my passport is here. Um, so don't be scared. The examiner will not bite your head off. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, no mistakes in these first few answers, okay? Be very, very uh, careful with that. All right. Uh, Bismarck has this answer for us for the first one. 
Um, yes, uh, certainly. Here is my national identification card I used for registration of the IELTS test uh, for the IELTS test. Yeah, okay. Again, just pay attention. Accurate natural language. Good work, Bismarck. Okay, um, next question. So first question, may I see your identification? Next question, what is your full name? Okay, uh, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. What is your full name? Rustam has got this answer for us. Rustam says, my full name is Rustam Ismaila Kayev, but you can call me Rustam. Um, yeah, it's okay, Rustam. Um, it's, it's okay. Uh, instead of the but, okay, <clears throat> uh, say please. What's the difference? Please call me Rustam. And if you want to really be polite, you should say, uh, please um, call, <clears throat> call me uh, by my first name or given name, Rustam. Uh, what's the difference uh, between, uh, but you can call me Mike, let's say, or <clears throat> uh, please call me Mike, okay? What's the difference? What do you think? Uh, Chen says it's considered more polite. Yes. Um, not only that, um, but one is giving permission, the other is a request. So uh, not only is the uh, second one more polite, it is also a request rather than giving permission. Okay, All right. Uh, Snippy says, what if you have a middle name? Well, Snippy, you can say this. If you have a given name, you can say, for example, uh, my given names are uh, Michael uh, and uh, Gary, Gary being my middle name. And my family name is Smith. Uh, please call me Mike uh, for short. Okay, and so if you have a middle name, there are different ways you can introduce that as well. Um, you should always say your name. This is a good piece of advice here. So uh, always uh, state your name the same as it is in your identification that you use to register. Okay, that's very important. So uh, this is an example here. Now students, this is speaking, so make sure to speak and repeat. Okay, so copy what I say, copy how I say it. So speak and repeat. Okay, it's a speaking session, not just a listening session. Okay, so if you have a middle name, that's a good question, then you can say it like this. My given names uh, are Michael and Gary, Gary being my middle name, and my family name is Smith. Please call me Mike for short. Okay. All right, so always state your name. And again, students, say please call me instead of but you can call me. Cynthia, you're also using but you can call me. So um, the reason why is because high level of English, okay? So uh, the reason that you should uh, say, uh, please call me whatever your name is, instead of, but you can call me whatever your name is, is because for band seven to nine, which is good to expert level of English, the examiner is um, looking to check your ability to control language for a given situation. OK, 
Okay. So clearly, um, in IELTS speaking, you are having a conversation with a professional who is also a stranger and who is also testing you. So, in this case, you need to control your diction so that you show clear, descriptive, professional, and controlled communication. Okay? And that's what you really need to focus on. All right? That's what you want to do. Okay? So the examiner is a professional. You will see them. They're dressed for their job. They usually are wearing a suit or they have a tie, um, a dress. So they're dressed well, okay? And they're using a professional tone. So in this sense, it is like um, as if you are in a job interview, okay? All right. Um, okay. So um, let's keep going here. Now, the examiner, you've introduced yourself and you sound professional, okay? Again, let me just repeat. You can copy after me. May I see your identification? Yes, gladly. Here is my passport that I had used to register for the IELTS a few weeks back. What is your full name? My given names are Michael and Gary. My family name is Smith. Please call me Mike for short. Okay, Mike, for part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Where do you live? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. All right, Jian has this answer for us. I spent most of my entire life at the town of uh, Iloilo, a beautiful city in Western Philippines surrounded by beaches and mountains. Okay, so this would be about a band mm, six to seven, Jian. Can anybody tell me what the mistakes are with Jian's response? Okay, so critically analyzing your communication and the communication of your peers is an excellent way to improve. Uh, getting a band 9 in IELTS doesn't just mean that you have an awesome score on IELTS. It also means that you're an expert communicator and you can get what you want in life. Humans are social creatures. We live our lives in societies, in communities, in nations. Those of us who are expert communicators are leaders and live a high quality of life. Should be your goal. You should always criticize your communication and always work to improve your communication. Wow, that was some heavy content there, right? But it's true. Um, so, uh, why is this a band six to seven and not eight to nine? Um, Alexi says it's off topic. I don't think it's off topic. There's a couple of mistakes and there's some missing information. Okay. So, what are the mistakes? Can anybody pinpoint the mistakes? Yeah, it is kind of off topic in the sense that it's not present tense. So you're right. Many of you have identified that this is where do you live? Okay, so how do I change that? Yeah, Fuang, very good. So Fuang says we should have um, the present perfect here. I have spent. So now it means it's also present. So the word have here is very important. I've spent most of my entire life. Um, what else? Yeah, so now you're answering the question because the question is present tense. Very good. What else? Okay. Um, there's a bit of awkward language. Entire is uh, strange because most of, okay, and entire are conflicting. Entire means every minute. Most of means not every minute, just a lot of minutes. So most of my entire... Mm, not actually good communication, okay? John, 
I'm not picking on you here. I'm just showing you what you have to be careful about here, okay? So I have spent most of my life, okay? Not at the town, but you live in the town, okay? So at would be another mistake here, all right? In the town of Iloilo, a bit beautiful city in um, Western Philippines. Uh, it'd be probably the Western Philippines, surrounded by beaches and mountains and then a little bit more detail and I have been living in a uh, two bedroom um, detached house okay so uh, feedback review and feedback students super important okay so here's the correct version I have spent most of my life in the town of Iloilo a beautiful city in the Western Philippines surrounded with beaches and mountains and I've been living in a two-bedroom detached house now it's a band nine okay now it has the accuracy and the detail that is needed okay all right next question um, what do you do at the weekends uh, British English right at weekends um, American English is on the weekends doesn't matter which one you use, just be consistent. Okay. Ganesh, that's awesome. Ganesh just said, uh, after watching videos, I finally got eight bands. Ganesh, that is great. Uh, Ganesh, can you send me a, a testimonial, please, to adrian at aehelp.com? I would love to get your testimonial. Ganesh, send me a picture of yourself as well, please. We love posting success stories of our students. It vindicates what we do. So it's great, okay? All right, um, Anahita has uh, this answer for us. I sometimes go to my relatives' uh, houses or they come to our house in weekends. Indeed, we do it because we worth each other. Therefore, we either bake snacks or purchase them to welcome these guests. Okay, Anahita, that would be about, well, it depends how you say it, but no more than a band five based on the grammar and the structure. So um, I sometimes go to my relatives. What do you do at the weekend? Sometimes is again a bit off topic, right? Because here it's like asking you like, what do you usually do on the weekends? So um, Anahita, here would be a better answer. Most, I'm going to use your answer and just make it into a band nine, okay? So most of the time I study on Saturdays and relax on uh, Sundays okay sometimes I visit <clears throat> my relatives instead of houses say homes homes uh, or they come over uh, to our place uh, for a, a snack because uh, we love each other and have a close relationship. We often make food and have good conversations. Okay, so Anahita, this would be the band nine version of your answer. It's grammatically more accurate, it's more natural English, and it answers the question more directly. Okay, so notice the difference here, students. Um, <clears throat> Anahita's first response is, I sometimes go to my relatives' houses or they come to our house in weekends. Indeed, we do it because we worth each other. Therefore, we either bake snacks or purchase them to welcome these guests. And then here's the corrected version. Uh, most of the time, I study on Saturdays and relax on Sundays. Sometimes I visit my relatives' homes or they come over to our place for a snack because we love each other and have a close relationship. We often make food and have good conversations. Okay, good. Um, you can might even throw in a quick example just to show the examiner that you're really on the ball. Uh, my uncle 
and niece uh, came over last Sunday. There, nice smooth example. Okay. All right, now I'm seeing some good answers in the chat there from Barka, Lisa, uh, Simrandeep, great. Okay, good. All right, um, so, and only put your answers in once, okay, once. That's why Chen is doing a good job keeping it clean and removing um, copy-pasted um, answers. So only once, all right, students, uh, please. Don't spam the chat. Okay, um, so then the examiner says, let's talk about your family. Okay, so when you hear the word family, what words come to mind? Okay, what words come to mind when you hear the word family? Akriti uh, says parents. Okay. Smith says blood. Sure. Okay. Siblings. Love. <laughs> Great. I'm happy to see that word. Uh, grandfather. Uh, pillar of strength, says Aurora. Good. Sure. Yes. Uh, Jeanette says cousin. Okay, relatives, Rustam, very good. Okay, uh, bonding, Jeanette, very good. All right, happiness, sure, Hikmatillo, good to see you in the class. Happiness, yes. Uh, Chayani, nephew and niece, yes. How about siblings, anybody said that, maybe? Oh yes, we already have that, good. Okay, good. Relationships. Excellent. Excellent. Good, good, good. Okay, um, let's try this first question together and then we'll get into some volunteering. All right, we'll spend a good amount of time giving you chances to practice. So uh, here is the uh, first question for this topic. Do you have a sisters and brothers? If so, how many? Give me a nice uh, full sentence answer for this one. Okay. Koa Duong has this answer for us. Koa Duong says, I have two older sisters. Uh, they also live independently out of our family while my oldest sister gets married and my older sister study master of medicine in another city okay so koa this is about a band five okay we can make this better I have uh, two older sisters uh, who also live independently independently okay now, we don't need to say out of our family. If you say live independently, that means out of our family. Students, don't repeat yourselves in your speaking. So out of our family is the same as live independently, okay? You should avoid repetition of the same ideas, especially right next to each other, right? Um, while my oldest sister gets married is awkward grammar, okay? So I have older, two older sisters who also live independently. Uh, my eldest sister, Mary, uh, has a uh, family with two kids of her own. And my sister, Sarah, is doing her master's. So I changed your answer a little bit uh, just to give you further clarity. So. 
students, remember, in the IELTS speaking, okay, this is an important tip. Uh, remember I said this at the beginning, you're talking to a stranger, okay? So here, I said, uh, clearly in IELTS uh, speaking, you're having a conversation with a professional. They're analyzing your speech. It's not like just talking to any stranger, okay? They're analyzing your speech. And they're a stranger, okay? This person doesn't know you. So when you say, I have siblings, or I live in this city, or I'm going to university, be specific, okay? Be specific in IELTS speaking. Uh, state the exact names of people, uh, places, uh, university degrees. Details get you marks because they improve your lexical resource and I'm using capitals because that's one of the categories that you're being marked on. So they improve your lexical resource um, and coherence, which is another criteria that they're marking you on and uh, it makes it a lot clearer. So when you say that you have an older brother and a younger sister, say their names. So I have an older brother, Tom, and a younger sister, Susan. Um, I love them very much. Uh, my older brother is a couple years older than me and my younger sister is 19 months uh, younger, right? So really give those details. Does that make sense? Does it make sense why I'm emphasizing that you keep in mind that you're speaking with a stranger, okay? Um, so you have to think about that. Focus. On, that will also help you to relax, remembering that, oh, okay, I'm talking to a stranger here. I need to be really clear. Okay, Bismarck says, yes, it does. Harjot says, yes, sir. Fong says, yes. Okay, good. Ayush says, yes, I have one older sister, Apek Shaya, who is three years older than me. She has been a wonderful source of support and guidance throughout my life, and I'm grateful to have her as my sibling. Ayush, that is a band nine answer. You say that smoothly and you will get a band nine. And even if your pronunciation is not perfect, you will still get a band nine, okay? So here is an example of a band nine answer. So it is possible and see Ayush just did it, right? So Ayush says, yes, I have one older sister Apekshaya, who is three years older than me. She has been a wonderful source of support and guidance throughout my life, and I am grateful to have her as my sibling. So here the examiner says, great, that's a band nine. Answers the question, very coherent and clear, good natural language, vocabulary, and accurate grammar equals expert English. Okay, so that's how the examiner's thinking. All right, so Ayush, that's exactly how you do it. All right, that's exactly how you do it. All right, uh, students, let's. Um, recreate the IELTS situation even more precisely uh, by um, speaking to each other. So I will interview uh, some volunteers and then give you uh, feedback not only on your uh, lexical resource uh, vocabulary, uh, but also on your pronunciation, on your fluency, uh, clarity, other features of speaking that of course we cannot assess with just writing. So to volunteer for speaking, um, register a free or a paid account at aehelp.com. Chen, Sarah, if you could um, either or both of you throw the instructions into the chat. Chen, thank you. Uh, go for it. All right. Um, and uh, log into your My Student account. Click on Student Partner Speaking. 
Um, enable your microphone, so make sure your microphone and your headset, um, your speakers are working, and then uh, keep the window open, message me, send me a message. You will see me in there as master, and then just send me a message, say, I want to volunteer. Okay, I'll walk you through this. So this is aehelp.com. You can click this big uh, red button to join the premium IELTS package. It's just right there above my head. It's a one-time payment. You get lifetime access. It's extremely useful and it doesn't cost a lot. Uh, again, we're with IDP British Council. We're an IELTS test registration center. You go to your My Student account. In your My Student account, you click on uh, student partner speaking which is right there when you have time check out all the other goodies like the computer-based practice exams the full interactive course the IELTS exams workbooks uh, the lesson videos the IELTS audio CDs um, and of course student partner speaking uh, except that you will use this for IELTS and you will be polite you're responsible for your words and what you do. And then you're in the chat interface here. Okay. Now, in some countries, you might need to use a VPN. Of course, you need a good internet connection. Uh, and then you volunteer. So you can see Ali Asgar has found me. I'm in here as master. Ali Asgar has found me and sent me a message using the blue envelope there. Um, okay, and uh, let's see if Ali Asghar is available. Ali Asghar, are you ready? I don't think we've ever spoken to Ali Asghar, so let's see if we can start the day with a new candidate. Ali Asghar, if you're there, let me know. Ali Asghar is there, good. Ali Asghar, it sounds like you picked up, but I don't hear you, so I'm not sure if you're there. Students, make sure you don't have too many apps open, because if you're running YouTube and the speaking chat interface and other apps on your phone are running in the background, that could be an issue. Okay, Ali Asghar will circle back to you. I couldn't hear you there, so check with another student. Uh, Muhammad, one of our um, premium students. Let's see if we can reach out to Muhammad. Muhammad, are you there? Now we are working on upgrading our chat servers to make this even better for you, so be patient. Uh, Muhammad, are you there? Let's see if we can reach out to Muhammad Nafiz, yes. Mohammed, can you hear me? It sounds like you picked up, but I don't hear you. And students, of course, check your microphones and make sure you've enabled them. Okay. All right, Mohammed, I can't hear you, but what I'm going to do and um, uh, is I'll check with someone who can usually connect, um, and then um, if if it works, then it means it is working. Uh, if not, I'll just do a quick reset on the server, but let's check it out. Let's check out with Andrew, because with Andrew and his VPN, we usually do get a good connection. So Andrew, are you ready? I think Andrew's got an exam coming up pretty soon as well in the next couple of weeks here. So Andrew, if you're there, let's see if we can connect and let's see if it's with the system or if it's with the individual. That's always the trick, right? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? I can, Andrew. How are you doing? Oh, you're so low. Just give me a second to turn the volume down. <laughs> I, I can also turn my volume down, Andrew. I can speak a little bit more quietly like this. Yes? No? I'm just I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, Andrew, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, Andrew, <laughs> how, how are you doing? Excellent. I'm spending basically every week in our preparing for IELTS, throwing in my studies, university studies every now and then, but mainly focusing on IELTS, of course. Good, good. Um, when is your exam? Can you remind me? 
Uh, in nine days. Nine in days. Only. Nine days. Okay. I'm sure you'll do fantastic. So no problem. Just be yourself. Okay, um, Andrew. Let me ask you a couple of questions uh, with this part one. Are you ready? Yes, absolutely. Okay, let's do the introduction. So welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner. May I see your identification? Certainly. Here is my passport I use for registration. Please have a look. What is your full name? My first name is Andrew, and my last name is Lizenko. Please call me by my English name, Andrew. Okay, Andrew. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Where do you live? I'm currently living in a small town uh, called Kruz uh, on the northern coast of uh, the Baltic shore in Germany. Uh, I live in a relatively big uh, three-bedroom apartment together with my mom and sister. What do you do at the weekends? Well, these days I uh, usually work on Sundays, both with my job as software developer and doing studies. I usually have two lectures in the morning. Uh, besides, on Sunday, as I usually hang out with my friends. We go to a local pub and talk and play games. Uh, it was a great party yesterday. Let's talk about your family. Do you have sisters and brothers? If so, how many? Oh yes, I have one sibling, an elder sister, uh, Jane. Uh, she is 30, so nine years older than me. Uh, currently, she is living separately because her, her job as a doctor requires attending a lot of night shifts, and it makes a bit uncomfortable living together, so she decided to move out. What was it like growing up in your family? It was actually a lot of fun. Uh, I remember uh, basically every evening when my parents got home, uh, we usually went for a stroll out in the park, had a wonderful one near, near our first house. And after that, we uh, had a small family get together, we played games. Uh, I really remember losing at crosswords every single time, but nonetheless, it was so much fun. And I think these memories are one of the dearest to this very day. Okay, I'm going to stop there. All right, Andrew, that is outstanding. Very good. You're doing some very good uh, practice and paying attention to a lot of details. The only recommendation that I have, and this is for everybody else, it's a, it's a very common situation. You have to be careful, is to not over speak. So um, oh, yes. some, some, ex yeah, some examiners are not as patient as I am, especially if they have a long list of candidates for that day. They really try to keep the... Um, so you have to feel it and and you will see yeah. you will see that with the first few questions Andrew so um, it's okay to 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 give it a try and if the examiner interrupts you then you know that okay I have to be a bit more concise with this examiner they're not going to give me that much time for each of these questions so um, but definitely don't keep talking until they interrupt you some students get this advice from the internet or from some places that you just keep talking till they interrupt you and that's not a good idea uh, otherwise, you're, you're doing very well. So um, you would be a band nine at this point because you're giving me some very clear, accurate answers. Your, gr uh, your grammar is accurate and you're having a very natural conversation with me with very good um, descriptive words. So that was fantastic, Andrew. Um, in this case, students, if you're like Andrew and you are getting feedback where in part one you're getting some really good scores, uh, focus a lot of your energy and attention on practicing for part two and part three so that you can maintain those scores in those more challenging sections. All right, Andrew? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I actually got word from a friend of mine. He passed the exam on March 1st and he recently got his results. Mm -hmm. And he got an band eight overall, mm -hmm. uh, nine in listening, if I'm not mistaken, and 8.5 in reading and seven in writing and speaking. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so judging by his English, uh, I was very surprised that he scored so low in speaking. We practiced like a dozen times, mm -hmm. but may may maybe he was frustrated. He 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 talked about a fashionable person in part two. And fashionable person. Did. Yes, and okay. he chose to talk about his brother, 
and I think he went off the topic a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, part two has a major deciding factor on the overall score. So part two, you really have to just knock it out of the park. But um, yeah, I mean, um, it's, you know, when you get into the band eight, band nine category, and this is important for everybody to know, both in the speaking and in the writing, it does become a bit subjective. So there is a little bit of luck involved in who your examiner is. Um, but band eight, band nine, those are both of those are outstanding marks. So, I mean, your friend should still definitely be very proud of getting that score, no doubt. So, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, can definitely make his dreams come true now. And I'm sorry, one final question Do you know whether masks are still mandatory on the exam? <sighs> That's a tough one, Andrew. I mean, different places have different requirements depending on the health situation locally. Um, so prepare to in a way where you might have to wear a mask. I think in Germany, maybe not. Um, but uh, but in some countries, if there happens to be an outbreak of flu or not a lot of space in the local hospitals, then um, they might be a bit more strict. IELTS is um, definitely a high risk environment because you're in a closed room with one person and that one person sees a lot of people from many different places. So um, IELTS tends to have the mask rule in effect longer than other places. So prepare in that way that, that you might have to wear a mask, but I don't think you will in your case, Andrew. Okay. Okay, so I should probably call the exam center and to clear the tell. Yeah, the exactly. If you can, that's a good way to do it, um, to check with the exam center. And if you do have to wear a mask, then definitely bring your own that you're comfortable with instead of wearing one that yeah, they yeah. might give you and it's not going to be comfortable at all. So, um, so, and then practice with a mask on too, right? Because if you have to wear a mask and you have to be a little bit louder, use body language even more because they can't see your mouth, right? Yeah, that's, that's probably the main problem. Yeah, yeah, it is. Unfortunately, communicating with masks is more challenging. There's no doubt about that, okay? Yes, yes thank you. All sir. right, thank you. Good questions. Have a great day, Andrew. We'll talk again. Absolutely. Bye. Okay, bye for now. All right. Um, let me just refresh my chat here, students. I'm going to do a shift refresh um, and get uh, a new role of students in here. All right, everybody. So I just refreshed my chat. I'd recommend you to do the same. So if you're in the chat for a while um, and there's a lot going on, a lot of people interacting, you might have to refresh it to see the new people that are coming in and then volunteer again. Uh, Mohammed, I'm going to um, if you're still there, can you reach out to me again? Let's try to connect again. If you're listening to me, Muhammad Nafiz. <clears throat> if you hear me, Muhammad, let me know. I see that you're still in here. Okay. All right. Let's see if Lola's here. Lola, are you ready? If you're there, Lola, let me know. Yes. Thanks for the thumbs up, everybody, for Andrew. That's great. Hi, Lola. Hi, sir. How are you? I am doing good, thank you. Uh, Lola, you sound a little bit quiet. Can you get a bit closer to your mic or turn up your audio? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. You still sound a little bit quiet, but it's better for sure. On the IELTS, by the way, students, um, I often recommend that you speak 10% louder than your usual voice. Do you know why I say that, Lola? Speak 10% louder than your usual voice? Yeah, because um, um, examiners may must listen as clearly, so we must speak louder as much as we can. Yeah, absolutely. So you want to make it easy for the examiner to hear every word that you're saying. That's one reason I tell people to speak 10% louder than usual. There's another reason. What do you think, Lola? What do you think is another reason why I would recommend students to speak 10% louder than usual? Um, I don't know. <laughs> 
fair enough um when yeah we, when we speak when we speak louder lola we're more confident so oh yeah right so our voice actually yeah, yeah. gives us confidence so i'm like hi my name is lola <laughs> then i'm more confident right so yeah, yeah. so it's a it's a it's a simple trick to boost your confidence right and the other reason is you stand out more so it, when the examiner is hearing one candidate then another candidate then another candidate they kind of start to lose focus especially if you're near the end of the day like if you're speaking exam is at like three o'clock right and everybody's talking like this to the examiner but then you come in and you talk like this it kind of wakes them up like coffee they're like oh oh here's a loud person i'm gonna pay attention so um so it's a good kind of a trick um okay lola let's get into it are you ready for some questions yeah I'm ready. all right awesome let's talk about your family what was it like growing up in your family Growing up in my family was a lot of, was a joyful life. I had a lot of fun with my siblings uh, while playing with them different um, games like chess or volleyball or hanging out with my family on weekends. So it was fun. Are your parents and grandparents from the same country as you? Yes, my parents and my grandparents are the same country as me, but um, it, but my grand Okay, Lola, I'm losing you. You started to break up a little bit. Um, so just slow down for one moment. Um, and I think you're saying some very interesting content. So I'd like to hear it. I'm going to try this one more time. Okay, Lola? Okay. Okay, so okay. let's start that again. So are your parents and grandparents from the same country as you? If not, where are they from? Yes, my parents and my grandparents are from the same country as me, but my sisters were from another from different nationality. Like my dad's uh, grandfather was from um, Russian, and my mother's I mean, my father. So. All right, well, I'm not sure why, but the internet is is not allowing me to hear the most exciting part. I hear, I heard oh. the fir I heard the first part again, and I kind of heard the second part. You said that your great grandparents are from a different country, so your dad's yeah. grand. Okay, yeah, so they're called your great grandparents, yeah. um, but my great grandparents uh, are from different countries. Okay. Oh, I should uh, say. Yeah, my dad's uh, grandparents are John. Mm -hmm, were from Russia and, and my, my mom's grandfather mm -hmm. was from Arabic. Ar from an Arabic nation because there is no Arabic country, right? From an oh. Arabic nation. Do you know which country? Yes. Saudi Arabia. Okay. So, yeah, and you can say it even if you're not sure if it wasn't Saudi Arabia at the time, then you can just say it. So, and my mom's uh, grandfather uh, father, yeah. uh, was uh, from Saudi Arabia. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so, that sounds better. I'm going to just repeat this and then just copy me, okay? So, here we go. Okay. Um, yes, uh, my parents and my grandparents are from the same country as me, Uzbekistan, but my okay. great grandparents are from different countries. My dad's grandparents were from Russia and my mom's grandfather from Saudi Arabia. Okay, can you try it one more time? Are your parents and grandparents from the same country as you? Yes, my parents and my grandparents were from the same country as me, but my grand my great grandparents are from different countries. My dad's grandparents were from Russia, and my 
Ibrahim's grandfather was from Saudi Arabia. Okay, much better. And state the country. Are you, you're in Uzbekistan, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you want to always state that, right? Because it has to be clear. We're so global these days. It's sometimes hard to know, right? So, um, so you want to state it very, very clearly. Okay. Okay. So okay. be be specific. But you're on the right track, Lola. I definitely think that you have reached a consistent band 7 to 7.5. So just keep pushing forward, practicing every day, paying attention mm. to those details. And I think you'll get an 8 or even an 8.5. Uh, when is your IELTS exam? Um, but I haven't planned it yet, but it will, I will plan it in this space. <laughs> Do you think by summer or after summer or? No, in in the spring. Oh, in the spring, in the spring. Okay, I now I heard yeah. you clearly. All right, in the spring. Okay, all right. I think you know you've been doing lots of practice, so I think you're ready. Um, just keep going and focus a lot. Just like what I said to Andrew, focus a lot on part two and part three. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, yeah, Lola. Thank you so much uh, for you're feedback. Welcome bye for now all right yeah let's give lola a thumbs up too she's doing a great job she's uh really uh practicing uh hard so that's the way to do it all right everybody um let's take uh another person here let's take one of our premium students i want to give muhammad a chance here because muhammad i think got cut short so let's give muhammad another chance are you ready muhammad okay and like I say, students, we've got lots of students using this, so we are upgrading our servers, but it's going to take a couple of days, so um, hang in there, okay? All right, um, Mohammed, let's try you one more time. Mohammed, I still don't hear you. I'm not sure where you are in the world. You might need to use a VPN to have a better connection. So check your internet connection and try it with another student. See if it works, okay? Um, it's definitely um, dependent on your location as well. Okay, Mohammed, but don't give up. Like I say, we're upgrading servers, um, so that might help out as well. Okay, so keep it up. Okay, um, let's try uh, maybe Aliaskar. Aliaskar, are you ready? Okay, I definitely want to encourage some new students to try as well. Okay, AJ saying, call Domenico, please. Maybe I will. I can see Domenico in there. All right, Aliaskar. <laughs> Aliaskar, are you there? I don't hear you. Aliaskar, check your connection. All right, I'll try Domenico. Let's see if Domenico is here with us today. Domenico, are you ready? One of our very regular students and very studious students, Domenico. Are you there? Okay, Domenico says I'm up for it. Let's try. Domenico's in Italy, so we'll give that a shot. Um. Hello, Adrian. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Domenico. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, well, I'm taking. A, I'm kind of uh, taking a break because I've been practicing uh, fluency the whole day today, and let's. What I I am looking forward uh, to putting into practice what I learned in the morning. Awesome. Well, let's do it. Let's give it. A, give that a. A go. Um, yeah, let's let's have a start it. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about family. Why do you think family is important? 
Well, uh, I believe family is important because it's well. First of all, it's it's uh, it's an it's an important institution of our society because it's the place where children uh, grow uh, healthily, happily, and successfully. Uh, besides, uh, it's uh, uh, beside family is a. Uh, gets you to uh, gets you to learn important things that you can put you can use uh, later in life how often do you spend time with your cousins well as as far as i'm concerned m most of my cousins uh live uh, uh, in the north in the northern part of my country so i only get to see them uh, during summer time uh, or sometimes uh, i contact them on social on social media to see what's going on in their lives to catch up with each other's lives is family life important in your country yeah, uh, in my country, well, my country is uh, family oriented. So, it, you know, family is, uh, like I said, uh, like I mentioned uh, before, family is an, is an important institution uh, in, in society and it's, uh, it's an section in my country, uh, which is based uh, mainly on family. Uh, Disciplined, as I say, disciplined children uh, usually grow up in uh, uh, responsible families. Okay, that is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. All right, Domenico, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to give you some feedback. So I think your score would be about a 6.5, but I think you should be aiming with your English for at least a 7, even a 7.5. So good English moving on to very good English score um, what you need to do is you need to focus your answers a little bit more and this connects to what you were actually saying like you said you're practicing fluency right so mm -hmm. a, a big part of fluency to speak smoothly and quote unquote quickly is to be more precise with your answers. So really focus on that answer, explanation, uh, example, strategy, okay? What you're doing is you're giving me lots of answers. And when you give lots of answers, like answer one, answer two, answer three, it becomes more challenging to connect those ideas clearly and to make sense of them for your listener. So for the IELTS exam, simplify your thoughts, okay? Let me, let me give you a little bit, and be precise, let me give you a little bit more detail here. So I asked you, why do you think family is important? And you said, well, I believe family is important. And then you said, well, first of all. So as soon as you say, first of all, it tells the examiner that you're about to list your answers. Like, first of all, second of all, third of all, right? And mm -hmm. the examiner is going to panic in their head. You won't see it, but they're in their head, they're panicking. They're like, oh, no, no, no. This student is like going to be like A, B, C, D. I have to interrupt them. So you don't want to do this kind of well, first of all, okay? You want to kind of avoid that form of language. Um, and then you said, it's an important institution of our society. Okay, um, sure. Um, family is not, so many people will say that family is not just an important institution, but they will say what, Domenico? Family is the what of society? And somebody can help well, here with for Domenico in the chat as well. Maybe you can guess the word I'm thinking of. So family is the what of society? Yeah. The word starts uh, with an F, Domenico. Backbone, for example. Oh, that would be a re that would be yeah, that would be a really nice yeah. word the to use. The foundation, the foundation. That's what it foundation. is. Foundation. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, foundation. yeah. and Kingswell foundation. says fundamental. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is, uh, so, 
And I wouldn't even use the contraction it's, I would emphasize it. I would say it is the backbone of society. So it is it's the backbone. The backbone. Of society. Yeah. And backbone, um, of course, means the spine, right? Um, yeah. So um, it's a very nice expression. Or you could say foundation or fundamental, as some of you are using the other uh, word, word form, foundation. It's the fundamental, it's the backbone, it's the backbone of our society because mm -hmm. it's where, because it provides the children with a play, it provides the children with a place uh, to grow up. Yeah, exactly. So, and then keep it simple, right? It's, um, it's fundamental. So if you say it's the backbone of our society, it's, uh, fundamental. Uh, for children's development and the future of a nation okay and then instead of giving more answers and trying to explain more um, give a very specific example right so you could say this is the reason that Italy um, provides millions of euros uh, for family support Okay, and then you've got quantification and you've really emphasized the importance of family, right? Because when we give an institution millions or billions, you can even say here, um, then uh, we know that it's important, right? So this would be a more concise answer and it's getting you to focus on those details like Italy and billions of euros, okay? So let's try this one more time. I'm going to repeat this and then copy after me, okay? So, well, I believe family is extremely important. It is the backbone of our society. It's fundamental for children's development and the future of a nation. This is the reason Italy spends billions of euros to support families annually. Um, why do you think family is important? Well, I believe uh, family is extremely important because it represents the backbone of uh, our society. Uh, besides, it's a fundamental place for children, uh, for children uh, development and the future of a nation. For example, uh, for example, oh, for instance, this is the reason our Italy provides billions of years for family support. Very nice. Okay. So that's your target. So really focus on um, adapting your uh, conversation, Domenico. So Domenico, you're very good at your logic and at giving multiple good answers and you have really good vocabulary. What I would like to hear from you is a new style of speaking. Don't replace your speaking. I don't think, you know, you don't need to change who you are. Adrian, but I'm willing, I'm willing, to uh, I'm willing to, to make, uh, to put great effort in making uh, big changes to my speaking style, not only for life, but also for my professional career. Uh, which I would like to undertake after taking the IELTS exam. Perfect. And Domenico, I think you're absolutely on the right track. So keep it up, okay? Keep it up and, and keep doing it. I can hear the improvements. So you're doing fantastic. Thank you so much for volunteering and uh, we'll talk again soon, okay? Thank you, sir. Have okay. a nice day. You too. Well, I, I, I will uh, be attending this class a while I take a break uh, from from studies because uh, you know I I'm feel I feel a bit mentally tired. I feel I'm mentally tired. I need to do some physical exercise. I need mentally I need to take my mind off. Of, drained. Men, mentally, mentally drained. Mentally drained. Mentally yeah. drained. I need yeah. I need I I feel a bit uh, mentally drained, and I need to take my mind off my laptop for a while. Sounds good, Domenico. We'll talk again shortly. Bye for now. Thank you so much. All right. Thumbs up for Domenico. Domenico is always a great source of vocabulary. I was thinking about the word family is fundamental to society, but Domenico used the word family is the backbone of society, which is a very nice way to express that concept. So that was very, very good. Okay, um, let's take another volunteer, uh, Taimur. 
Let's try to reach out to Ty Moore. Um, students, as you can hear, the system does work. Um, so Ty Moore, are you ready? Uh, you just have to check what's going on on your end as well. So your connections, your internet quality. If you're trying to connect through a mobile phone through data, probably not the best in most places okay data connections are extremely complex they relay and they bounce around so um, when you're using chat servers it's it's it can be a bit of an issue uh, time more if you're there let me know and uh, thumbs up there for Domenico absolutely so time more if you're there give me a sign Maybe, maybe not. Um, let's see uh, somebody else here. Um, no, 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 no. Boomy? Don't call me, I'll call you. Boomy, are you ready? If you're trying to call me, it turns into a zoo. Boomy, if you're there, let me know. Yes. Okay, Boomy, let's give it a shot. Booby, can you hear me? Make sure you've got your microphone active, activated on the website. Great to hear a new voice. I don't hear you. Boomy. So check it out with another student. By the way, students, if you're new to the system, I really strongly recommend um, trying with somebody else. Let's see if uh, Fuang is there. Are you ready? It seems like students who have used the system before are um, doing okay. Uh, you can always ask them as well. So Domenico, Andrew, uh, Chayani, Lola, there are a few people in here who have been using the system effectively for weeks now. If you're having trouble, they could be a great source of information. I'm sure they'd be happy to help you out uh, and let you know what's going on. Hi, sir. Hi, Fuang. How are you? I'm doing great today. How about you, sir? I'm doing great. Fuang, if somebody sent you a message and asked you to help them figure out how to use this chat, would you help them? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's why I'm recommending people who are using it for the first time to try to contact your peers um, and ask them what they're doing to figure it out, especially if they're from the same country. Uh, Fuang is from... Drum roll. Vietnam. Brrr, Vietnam. Vietnam. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> Fuang, uh, are, you, are you from Ho Chi Minh? Uh, Hanoi? Um, Ho Chi Minh City. Sir. Ho Chi Minh. I was. I should have gone with the first guest. There. Sorry, Fong. All right, Fong. And how is your day in Ho Chi Minh today? Um, I have a lot of assignment on my university and um, uh, working at a coffee shop, so it's hosting. But I really enjoy your I class, so. Uh, so you decided to just uh, stop work, not do the assignments, and join the IELTS class instead, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Perfect. I love it. <laughs> All right, Fong. Well, I'm here to help you. <laughs> so it's as long as we're learning, right, Fong? As long as we're learning. That's great. Um, okay, Fong. So I'm going to ask you a few questions about family. Are you ready? I'm ready, sir. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, let's talk about uh, family. Do you have any siblings, sisters or brothers? Uh, oh yes, I have one younger brother named Huang Wun. He's about 15 years old and uh, 185 centimeter tall. He's really love basketball and playing guitar at the weekend with his friend. Um, like last Saturday, he invited me to enjoy his concert at the lab coffee shop. What was it like growing up in your family? I'm really grateful to be a part of my wonderful family. My parents did everything possible to support me and my younger brother to ensure we made sure both education and well-being. 
Over, we have never had uh, arguments or disagreement because my parents always teach us to be empathetic. In this, I always appreciate and show my respect to the sacrifice of my father and mother to us. Are your parents and grandparents from the same country as you? And if not, where are they from? Well, po both my grandparents and my parents come from the same nation, Vietnam. Uh, to the best of my recollection, my grandmother told me that she and my grandpa fell in love back in the year 1950, and my family have resided in the South Vietnam for at least 80 years until now. Okay. Very nice, Wong. Okay, um, I'm going to give you a bit of feedback. So first of all, that was really good. Solid 7.5 at least. Um, keep working on it because I think you're nearing a band 8, Fuang. Your pronunciation is becoming clearer and clearer every time I speak with you. So that is uh, fantastic. Um, also, your communication logic is outstanding so you're really keeping in mind that i'm talking to a stranger this is professional it's a conversation i need to connect my answers and your content reflects that so um, in some parts almost too much <laughs> let me give you <laughs> let me give you a little bit of a, um, an example of what you did there so i said do you have any brothers or sisters and you said, yes, I have one younger brother. You mentioned his name. And then you said he is about 15 years old and he's 158 centimeters. It's maybe a bit too much detail. So you can be a little bit more direct. You can say he's 15 years old and he's really into basketball. He's a good little brother. And then you can just stop. So talking about his height and so on is not necessary unless it's part two. If you're talking about your younger brother in the part two cue card, then introduce him in a bit more detail. Okay. Okay, sir. So I I um, always remember to um, mention appearance in my speaking. So, and it's a good way to think about it when you're talking about objects or places or people to describe the appearance, but control it depending on the situation. So if it's like the first or second question of part one, don't go into too much detail. Okay. Okay, sir. All right. Now, um, what was it like growing up in your family? I wanted to say this before because I think it was Lola and Andrew that answered this question as well. Everybody did a really good job answering this question. Um, really nice natural English. So you said, I'm really grateful to be a part of my family. That's very nice natural English. I'm very grateful to be a part of my family. Uh, I think Andrew said growing up in my family was a joyful life. That's also very good English. Um, and uh, maybe it was Lola or the other way around who said it was actually a lot of fun. That's also very good English. So those were all very good ways to start the answers to these questions. So that was excellent. Okay. Um, and it sounds like you have a great family, Fuang. It sounds like you guys get along very well, and it sounds like your parents have very good communication skills and don't fight with you, so that's great. Uh, okay. Um, Fuang, you said uh, your parents and grandparents come from the same nation, Vietnam. You were specific. It was a really nice answer. At the end, you said, uh, my family has resided in South Vietnam for at least 80 years until now, is what you said, right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Let's make that last little bit just a tiny bit better. Um, so my family has resided in South Vietnam for at least, there's a better way to describe that than 80 years until now. Um, what do you think is a better way to express that? Maybe somebody in the chat can help here. Okay, if your family, like your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents, your great great grandparents, they all live in the same place in the same country, then in natural conversation in English, we would usually say, My family has lived in southern Vietnam for at least uh, um, the last uh, century. Alexander and Harjot have the right thought in mind. I decades um listener three 
Yeah. Three generations. Yeah, exactly. So that would be the best way to express that, right? Like my family has resided in South Vietnam for at least three to four generations. I sounds like more like four to five generations in your case. So you can say that, okay? So just repeat after me. Vuong. Uh, well, both of my both my parents and grandparents come from the same nation, Vietnam. Uh, to my best recollection, uh, my uh, grandparents were also married here in Ho Chi Minh City. My family has resided in South Vietnam, I would say, for at least four to five generations. Are your parents and grandparents from the same country as you? Uh, well, both my grandparents and my parents come from the same nation, Vietnam. Um, to my best recollections, uh, my uh, grandparents were married uh, in Ho Chi Minh City, and my family resides in in there uh, for um, uh, four to five generations. Nice. Okay, so that's what you want to do. Don't say in there. The in there part is a little bit awkward. Has resided here for four to five yeah. generations, okay? But almost perfect, almost perfect. We can always improve, right, Fuang? But almost perfect. So thank you so much, Fuang, for those lovely answers and keep practicing. You're getting better, I can hear it, absolutely, okay? Uh, thank you, sir, for having me such a long time. I really appreciate this. You're Have a nice day, sir. Very welcome, and Fuang, do remember your assignments and your work also, okay? <laughs> Okay, sir. All right. Bye for now. All right. Let's give Fuang a thumbs up. Let's send her some energy vibes so that she can get her schoolwork and her day job done. Um, obviously, very busy person. Uh, okay, everybody. So we're using the chat interface here at aehelp.com. Like I say, we're always upgrading, improving our servers, our materials. We're adding new videos. You can check out all the content here um, if you want to book a full IELTS speaking interview with me through zoom you can do that with this uh, yellow button that's just behind my head there I'll bring that up a little bit higher so you can see it so uh, we were using the student partner speaking button and you can book a mock IELTS speaking interview with me with that um, yellow button okay and then for those students who are premium users you saw some of those premium user badges uh, in the chat make sure to go through the practice exams the interactive course the lesson videos uh, there's lots of content there for you okay um, and for those of you who don't have access to the premium course yet make sure to join it by clicking the big red button it's definitely worth your effort and time all right um, Chen, thank you for moderating. Uh, Sarah, um, thank you for moderating as well. And uh, it was great having all of our members, all of our viewers here with me today. Uh, for General IELTS students, uh, you've got your own website. It is gieltshelp.com and you can click that red button um, there uh, for the premium IELTS course. I'll be back tomorrow, uh, students, with... Um, uh, let's see, I believe it's writing uh, task two for our members a little bit earlier in the day, yeah, and then listening part one and two strategies and practice from our practice exams for our subscribers. So uh, definitely subscribe, um, practice your writing members, and uh, join the live classes tomorrow. Uh, again, the websites that will guide you and help you that power these lessons are aehelp.com, gltshelp.com. We're helping thousands of students through those portals all the time. Much love to all of you, wherever you are in the world today. You're all beautiful people. I know I say that uh, every now and again at the end of the class because it is the truth. We're incredible creatures, us humans, as far as we know. Um, some of the most incredible uh, existence in our universe. So uh, believe in yourselves, okay? Be positive, spread positive vibes. I'm Adrian, I'm signing out from Canada, Victoria, and I will be back tomorrow. Bye for now, everybody.